Yes, thank you, Christy. Sorry to interrupt. Um, yeah, first of all, I would like to thank you and your colleagues at Livre Canada Books for giving me this opportunity to present the webinar and the listeners um, who are joining us here today. I hope I'll give you a better understanding of the Dutch market, which has gone through an intense couple of years, to say the least. Um, I'll mainly discuss the, the trade publishing market because that is what I'm most familiar with. But as Christy already said, feel free to ask questions during the webinar about any related topics that you'd like to know more about, and um, I can get back to those during the Q&A part. I might not have all the answers ready, but if I don't know the answer, I'll do my best to find the information and be in touch with you at a later stage. So uh, let me just start by discussing the Dutch language, which brings linguistic unity between the Netherlands and Flanders, which is one of the three official regions of the Kingdom of Belgium. It's this linguistic region that will be in the spotlight at this year's Frankfurt Book Fair. The work of Dutch and Flemish authors is considered as Dutch literature. The Netherlands tends to be more influenced by the Anglophone world, whereas Flanders is closer to the Latin countries. Moreover, the discrepancies between a Protestant Calvinist history in most of the Netherlands background in Belgium create an additional invisible border. Holland is made up of 12 provinces. Often, however, people use the word Holland when referring to the Netherlands. But strictly speaking, Holland is only made up by two of those 12 provinces, namely um, North Holland and South Holland. Since the Dutch Golden Age, which roughly spans the 17th century, the area covered by these two provinces, which includes Amsterdam, Rotterdam, and The Hague, has been the political, economical, and cultural center of the country, hence the informal use of Holland instead of the Netherlands. For now, I'll use both terms interchangeably, but I'll always be talking about the country. Let me give you uh, some numbers for the Netherlands uh, to give you a bit of context. The country covers nearly 42,000 square, square kilometers, of which 7,600 square kilometers are made up of rivers and lakes. In November 2015, the country counted close to 17 million inhabitants, and that year an average was counted of around 500 inhabitants per square kilometer. So it's quite a densely populated country. 2015, the gross domestic product amounted to the equivalent of 961.2. This translates to a per capita GDP of a little over $56,500. The real economic growth is seeing positive numbers again, 1% uh, in 2014 and 1.9% in uh, 2015. And with that, the unemployment rate has dropped from 7.4% in 2014 to 6.9% last year. As for the age structure, 29.1% uh, of the population was between 0 and 24 years old, 53.3% was between 24 and 64 years old, and 17.6% was over 65 years old. And lastly, the Netherlands has a very high literacy rate of 99% has been showing economic recovery in the past two years. It's expected that the Dutch GDP will continue to grow with 2% per year for both this year and next year. But with a highly uncertain international picture due to its open economy, the Netherlands is sensitive to a sharp possible, uh, possible sharp global slowdown. Two important eras of historic eras of the Dutch publishing market that I wanted to discuss here. Uh, the first one took place during the Dutch Golden Age, as I said, that roughly spanned the 17th century. Uh, this development spread throughout all branches of Dutch society, including the production, distribution, and consumption of printed media. Literacy was on the rise. University were, universities were founded, middle classes were expanding in the cities, and large number of mostly religious and economic refugees were arriving from around Europe bringing along specific skills. It's been claimed that in the 17th century, more books were printed in the Netherlands than in all other European countries put together and in many different languages. An important era took place before and during the Second World War. After 1933, several Dutch publishers began producing and printing German language books written by exiles of the Nazi regime. That invaded the Netherlands in May 1940, Several printing companies started to cautiously and covertly produce books and pamphlets. Publishing House The Busy Bee, for instance, was founded illegally in December 1944 by an active member of the resistance. Go to the general overview of the Dutch domestic book market and publishing industry. 
and start with an overview and key figures of the trade book publishing industry. Um, the Dutch book industry went through a rough couple of years in the early 2000s and 2010s, but is finally starting to grow uh, to show signs of recovery. 2015 ended with a plus for the first time since 2008. Of the trade books increased with 3.5% in 2015 compared to 2014. This was the first substantial rise in turnover since 2008, as the trade volume decreased by around 30% between 2008 and 2014. Seven copies of books were sold in 2015, with a total value of about 724 million Canadian dollars. This number is up with 4.8% compared to the previous year. This revival continued in the first half of this year, with a 1.1 increase of the number of copies sold compared to the same period in 2015. However, we're still far from 2008, which was an absolute record year when over 50 million copies were sold. To the distributor CB Logistics for 2015 and up until October, a total of 20,277 new titles had been published in Holland, with a total number expected for that year at 28,557. This roughly translates to close to 1,700 titles per million inhabitants of the Netherlands for 2015. Here, 9,532 new Dutch language titles were published in digital format in the book market has now led to a significant decline in the number of new titles published. On the contrary, between 2011 and 2013, more new titles were published. Since then, the number has indeed slightly declined. However, the growth between 2011 and 2013 should mainly be attributed to new e-books and print-on-demand titles. On to uh, the number of books that are published in translation. So an estimated 75% of titles that are published in Holland are translations. By far the most important language of origin is English. In the 1980s and 90s, more than 50% of, of titles published in the fiction and poetry genres were translated from the English. For these two genres, this percentage has now settled at around 45%. The Scandinavian languages have grown in popularity thanks to their successful crime writers extent and in a random order, titles are translated from Spanish, German, Italian, and French, and of course, many other languages. I have noticed that due to the crisis in recent years, there is a tendency to increase the number of domestic authors and decrease the number of translations. It's of course much cheaper and easier to publish and market domestic titles. Translations make up about 30 to 40% of the total turnover for trade books. look at the sales of English language books uh, by domestic publishers first. So many foreign language publishers are active on and based in the Dutch market, and they mostly publish in English. In 2015, they accounted for 12.1% of the turnover for physical books and 9.3% of book sales. This proportion has increased in recent years. The turnover share of English language imported titles kept decreasing year after year until 2013. This share increased, though, from 9.9% in 2014 to 12.2% during the first half of this year. So sales share for important English language books rose less sharply, as you can see on the slide. So young Dutch people read English more and more easily, which specifically gave the young adult segment an unprecedented Thanks to vloggers on YouTube, but also to an increase in bilingual education, 11 English YA books very easily nowadays. This is, of course, a hopeful development for English language book sales in the long run, but a growing source of competition for Dutch publishers. About 6 million Dutch speakers in Flanders. Belgium is, of course, an important and dynamic market for Dutch publishers. CB Logistics distributes books of Dutch publishers both in the Netherlands and Flanders. And even though Dutch publishers largely export their production into Belgium, most of the Flemish market is also controlled by local subsidiaries of major Dutch groups, which I will discuss soon. Closer look at the actors in the trade book uh, publishing and retail market. So in October 2015, there were about 1,200 publishers. In about 100 nearly, published nearly 95% of all titles. The three largest publishing groups in the Netherlands are currently WPG Publishers, which stands for Weekblad Persgroep, uh, Weinbos and Koning Publishing Group and the Nano Publishing Group. 
So I'll discuss these three groups um, in detail. Um, so let's start with the WPG group. Uh, let me first give you some numbers to illustrate the impact of the financial and reading crisis on a big group such as WPG. So between 2010 and 2013, the group lost 65 million in turnover. So that's in three years. Um, the group had to reorganize in 2013, during which 123 people had to leave and several imprints were closed or sold. The most important imprints and publishers from the WPG group to know for right sellers, um, there are many more than the ones that I have indicated here, but I had to make a, a choice, um, are the ones that I've, I've indicated here on this slide. Um, so there's first A.W. Bruna with its imprint, including uh, the eponymous A.W. Bruna, Signature, Lef, and VIP. The Busy Bee, um, there's the eponymous The Busy Bee, Cargo, Thomas Rapp, and Ogen Blick. WPG Kinder Media, which uh, it's, in, it's children's publishers. So these imprints, their imprints include Plusma, Leopold, and Clerido children's books, uh, although Leopold and Clerido children's books hardly publish books in translation. Then um, there's WPG Publishers Belgium, and their imprints include Monto, Standard, and the Basic Bay, Amsterdam, Antwerp. Again, Standard and the Busy Bee Amsterdam Antwerp um, mostly publish domestic authors. Then let's move on to uh, the VBK Publishing Group, uh, which became an independent company owned by its management and staff in November 2012. Um, it was part of another group until then. So the most important imprints, again, and publishers to know from this group for right sellers, uh, there are many more um, than the ones that are indicated here. Um, there are Ambo Antos. Uh, Ambo Antos also has, um, is the owner of a publisher called Rustlicher, which I'll get back to later. They publish a specific compact kind of book. Um, then there's Anke Hermes, Atlas Contact, with the two interest business contacts, and Meridian. So just a few words on Meridian. The, the Dutch media group, which is now called Over Amstel, and it was sold to Atlas Contact earlier this year. The Fontaine um, publishes um, children's and YA and crime titles. Uh, Cosmos, uh, then there's Leuting Seidhoff. Uh, Leuting Seidhoff is actually the market leader in the fantasy genre, uh, but they also publish commercial fiction, nonfiction, and have a children's imprint. Uh, then Koch, uh, they, um, their imprints include Zoma and Koning, Kallenbach and Koch itself. So Kallenbach and Koch publish Christian themed titles. Uh, and then there is Den Have. Then the third big publishing group is Lano, which is the result of the 2010 acquisition by Lano publishers of the Bucherei, Spectrum, Möllenhof and Unibook. So the most important imprints to know here are um, Möllenhof Bucherei with its imprints Möllenhof and Bucherei, Unibook is Spectrum with Van Hokema and Warendorf, Van Gogh and Het Spectrum. Um, a big reorganization took place within Unibook Het Spectrum in early 2014, during which, among others, 23 people were laid off. Um, and then there's Terra Lano as well, which publishes illustrated um, practical books. Then in addition to the three big groups, there are many independent uh, publishers and smaller groups. So let's start with just an overview of the few, few smaller groups. There's Overamstel Uitgevers, which used to be known as the Dutch Media Group, and with Lebowski, the House of Books, Holland, Seep and Moon. Then um, single publishers following WPG Group's 2013 or reorganization, several literary imprints were bought out by single in 2014. And their imprints include Querido, Q, The Arbeiderspers, Neig and Van Dittmar, Atheneum, and also De Geus. De Geus, um, which up until May of this year was one of Holland's best known independent publishers, but they uh, were sold to single. Um, they're still a bit in a bit of a transition phase, and founder Eric Visser will eventually focus completely on his new English language publishing venture called World Edition. Amsterdam, founded in 2005 as an independent publisher, it has recently acquired several publishing houses. So now it looks more like a smaller group than an indie publisher. Um, and important publishers for foreign rights sellers to know include New Amsterdam and the Wereld Bibliothek. And then, of course, HarperCollins uh, Holland isn't a small group as it's part of the worldwide HarperCollins group, but its team and number of acquisitions in Holland are still relatively small, so I've decided to put them here. Um, they started their activities last year. Then um, 
let's take a look at a few of the independent publishers. The largest fully independent publisher in Holland is Prometa is Bert Bakker. Then um, there's Balance, which split off from the Basic Bay a few years ago, also publishes serious nonfiction like the Basic Bay. And then Podium von Oorschot, Character uh, Cosse, uh, The Harmony, and Thunder, which was founded in 2012 at the height of the publishing crisis. Uh, but it has very, grow very quickly grown into an important player on, of the Dutch trade publishing scene. And then lastly, there is the Gotmo Uitgevers Group. Um, then the crisis has also uh, created space for new opportunities and specifically for publishers who take a different approach, um, either by trying out alternative business models and or by publishing niche, niche titles. So, apply two publishers that apply a, non, um, a profit sharing model, which are Bertram and De Leo and De Gring. So the profit sharing model doesn't give authors any advance on royalties. So, however, once all the fixed costs have been covered, the publisher shares the profits 50-50 with the authors. Moreover, these publishers often pay out twice a year, whereas traditional publishers in the Netherlands usually do so only once a year. In 2010, Bertram and De Leo started to be profitable one year in. The Kring offers their authors the possibility to sign a joint venture agreement. And neither publisher, however, currently acquires foreign titles. As a different business model is Das Mach, um, the young team behind Das Mach Publishers, which had already been publishing a literary quarterly called Das Magazine, launched a successful crowdfunding campaign to start their publishing house in the fall of 2015. 3,000 people to back, to back them financially. They proposed an innovation of the traditional publishing model, including publishing less books and taking better care of the few books they publish. With the purchase of a print book, they also gave away its ebook version for free. They proposed higher royalties to their Dutch authors, starting at 15% instead of the initial 10%. Early, but almost a year in, Das Mach is doing quite well. Earlier this week, a few authors of the Busy Bee actually announced that they will move over to Das Mach. And they recently published their first book in translation. I'm not quite sure what kind of conditions they propose when acquiring translation rights, as I haven't had the opportunity to work with them in that way yet. Third alternative business model is um, publishing niche titles. And two of those publishers are Maven and Banana Fish. Maven publishes um, accessible scientific books that analyze human behavior, and they started in 2010. Banana Fish, their motto is oddly enough untranslated, which, which says it all. They aren't interested in hearing about new titles, but rather want to look at backlist titles, which for some reason have been ignored by their fellow Dutch publishers. Although self-publishing hasn't reached the popularity it encounters in Anglo-Saxon countries, it is definitely a growing segment of the publishing market in Holland. Um, single publishers launched their self-publishing platform, Brave New Books, in 2013 in collaboration with com. Publishing on their platform is free, but one can receive advice or specific training from single publishers against the fee. Another player is, of course, Amazon, who arrived in Holland almost two years ago, and with it, the Kindle Direct publishing platform. There are several other online platforms in Holland that offer self-publishing services. Not only unknown authors upload their book to self-publishing platforms, however, also some already established and sometimes very successful Dutch authors have been doing so. Pauline Cornelissen, for instance, who sold hundreds of thousands of copies of her two non-fiction books that were published with Atlas Contact, decided to self-publish her latest book, which is a fictional account about the office life of a guinea pig. It has been a steady presence in the bestseller 60 since its publication this spring. print formats on the Dutch language market. So most often the initial edition is a trade paperback, sometimes also um, hardcover. The prices range between 26 and 36 Canadian dollars on average. Um, second, which is quite typical for the Dutch market, it's launched six months to the initial edition and the price is about half the price of the initial format. It's always a round number in euros, so usually 10, 12, 50 or 15 euros. So it's interesting to know that this format does not meet any success on the Flemish market, and on the Dutch market, it isn't always a given either that a mid-price edition is even published. Now, sales of mass market editions have seen a sharp decline in Holland. It is nowadays even quite uncommon for publishers to publish or license mass market editions. The few mass market publishers that are still active on the Dutch market hardly ever deal with foreign publishers. They mostly buy licenses from Dutch trade publishers. 
Um, and for many years, Rainbow Pockets was a market leader as an imprint of Master Mündica, who declared bankruptcy in 2012. It was bought by indie publisher The Harmony, who revamped the design. And uh, whereas initial print runs used to be 15,000 copies, they now average around two to 3,000 copies. It happens that publishers publish special, very cheap editions exclusively for a chain of bookstores or supermarkets. So-called promo pockets, which include the words book published exclusively for the bookstore chain XYZ, are generally sold at €4.95 or in Canadian dollars, $7.20. Um, this aggressive pricing is possible because these special and exclusive orders fall outside the scope of the fixed book price, which is applied by law. Uh, these promo pockets are usually published at a time when a new title of the same author comes out. And according to some book professional, promo pockets represent currently about 10% of book sales. So I already mentioned it earlier um, as an imprint of Ambo Antos, the Dwarf Slager or Flipback Edition. It measures 8 by 12 centimeter when it's closed and it's printed on Bible paper. It easily fits in your pocket or handbag and is very popular in particular with commuters and travelers. It's printed parallel to its binding, so it offers vertical reading. The Dutch patent has been exported to several countries, including France. Now, this July 18 screenshot of the bestseller 60 shows two editions of the same title, Heidstein by Dutch thriller author Saskia Noort. On number 41, you'll see the flipback edition, and number 43, the hardcover edition. The book's trade paperback edition ranked number one that week, and um, the trade paperback costed about 29 Canadian dollars. The flipback costs about $26, and the hardcover about $36. So the flipback edition is quite a popular form format in Holland, and I always see them prominently on display in bookshops when I'm there. Um, as for the distributors, uh, since the 2012 bankruptcy of their only sizable competitor, CB Logistics, formerly known as Central Buchhuis, in the Netherlands and Flanders, active institution and 500 publishers, 1,800 physical booksellers, and 74 online booksellers are stockholders. Because of different interests, you can imagine that this co cooperative nature can be a source of tension. CB Logistics stocks current titles of almost all Dutch language publishing houses and handles, amongst others, warehousing, physical and digital distribution, internet sales, and transportation. They also provide a print-on-demand service, which allows publishers to maintain titles on sale without having to stock them. CB Logistics also acts as a wholesaler for several product groups, in particular for foreign language books, which I'll get back to. Then for the retailers, um, First of all, there's a traditional bookstore, both physical and online, and currently about 88% of the turnover of physical book sales is obtained by sales via traditional, traditional physical and online bookstores. And despite the declining book sales, uh, the number of bookstores has remained fairly stable with a relatively small number of shops that closed over the past few years. In 2014, the Netherlands had 1,471 specific outlets for books, 3.5% less than in the peak year 2011. Since then, however, several more shops have closed. So there are four large national physical and online bookstore chains. So first of all, Bruna, the market leader with 375 outlets in Holland. And it's not to be confused with the publisher A.W. Bruna, although they do have the same family roots. Uh, the second bookstore chain is Ako, um, which has over 100 outlets throughout Holland, and a lot of them on railway stations and uh, Schiphol Amsterdam Airport. Um, Libris BLZ covers about 20% of the market share via an alliance of over 100 independent Libris bookstores. And then the last one is the Read Shop, which has over 150 outlets throughout the Netherlands. And there used to be another big chain of bookstores called Selexis, and in March 2012 it filed for bankruptcy but merged with the Flexo, another chain mostly known for its sale of secondhand books. The new chain was baptized Polare, but it also went bankrupt in February 2014, surrounded in controversy. Now, several former Polare stores reopened independently in the following months, quite a few of them after successful crowdfunding operations. And one of them is the famous bookstore Dominicana in my hometown, Maastricht, situated in a 13th century Gothic church. Um, it's now part of the Libres BLZ Alliance. Now, there are also a few major online-only bookstores, and Bold.com is by far the most important online-only uh, bookstore. It started in 1999 by the German uh, media group Bertelsmann as Bertelsmann Online, and the company started selling, out, selling books 
online. After Bertelsmann left in 2002, it also started to sell other products over the course of the years. And it partnered with Kobo in 2014. With no less than 6 million visitors per year, Ball.com is the largest e-commerce site in the Netherlands. ECI was founded as a book club publisher, which was extremely successful in the 1980s and 90s with um, physical bookstores in all large cities of the country. Um, it filed for bankruptcy in 2013 and was bought by media group Nova Media, which is also the owner of publisher New Amsterdam. It now continues to operate as an online-only book and media store. Now, in 2014, Amazon made its entrance on the Dutch market, and what was feared by many publishers and booksellers turned out to hardly have an impact on the market, at least for now. Ball.com already had such a large market share that people continued to buy there. And there are many other much smaller players on the Dutch market of online bookselling. According to CB Logistics, there were in total 164 online retailers in October 2015. Now, it should be noted that online sales via publishers' own websites or direct-to-consumer sales are hardly making an impact on book sales. Not all publishers even have a web shop connected to their websites. There's still a lot of room for improvement here, which probably or should happen in the years to come. Now, there is also a large number of independent bookshops in the Netherlands. Most of them are very small and operate locally. But one of the exceptions is Atheneum, the largest independent bookstore of the country. Book sales in outlets that aren't bookstores make up about 12% of the market, and these sales take place at entertainment specialists, department stores, and supermarkets, for instance. Now, uh, special stores remain a favorite place to buy books for Dutch readers, but competition is growing. The reader increasingly buys books at stores that also sell other products. And they also shop more frequently on the internet. Still, in January 2016, as you can see here, over 50% of the most recent purchase of books was done in a physical bookstore. Several associations and collective structures involved with books, which you can see on the slide. I'd like to point out two of them, the last two. The CPNB, uh, which is the Collective Promotion for the Dutch Book, um, and I'll, hear, I'll talk about that more later. And there's also the Dutch Foundation for Literature, which is an institution promoting Dutch authors, Dutch literature abroad, and translations in the Netherlands. And I will also talk about them more a little bit later on. Um, then Holland counts a lot of uh, festival fairs and other initiatives to promote literature and reading in general. Now, here's an overview of the most important ones. The year 2016 is the year of the book. It's a special campaign organized by, amongst others, the CPNB, in order to bring reading and books back under the attention of the Dutch. Then um, the Dutch Book Week and its Book Week gift. First of all, it's not really a week as it runs for 10 days every year in March. Uh, organized by the CPNB, it aims to remind the public of the wealth of books available in the bookshops the rest of the weeks of the year. One important stimulus is the Book Week gift, uh, a short novel commissioned specially from a writer of contemporary fiction. The bookshop buys the books from the CPNB and gives one copy away for free during the Book Week to every customer who spends at least €12.50, which is a bit, a bit over 18 Canadian dollars, on a Dutch book, whether original in Dutch or in translation. The gift is truly a phenomenon. In recent years, its print run has exceeded 750,000 copies. Now, a similar event to celebrate children's books, the Children's Book Week, is organized every year in September and October, and they also have a Children's Book Week gift. And then Manuscripta, which is organized by the CPNB, is the annual opening of the book season, and events are held the first weekend of September in Amsterdam, so this coming weekend. Um, it's a public rather than a trade event, however, um, especially since this year publishers will no longer have stands. But readers can see Dutch and foreign authors read passages from their books, attend books present, book presentations and interviews with authors, etc. Now, the Lace Ambassade, launched in June 2016 by former New Amsterdam publisher Liederij de Paris, uh, the Embassy of Reading aims to invite people to get more out of their books through all sorts of articles and programs. The Crossing Border Festival is held in The Hague, and it's one of Europe's main international literature and music festivals. I've noticed it's getting more traction in the international publishing world, and last year a selection of international editors was actually invited to attend the festival. The Antiquarian Book Map and Print Fair is the largest and most prestigious antiquarian book fair of the Low Countries, and it's held in October each year. 
There's also a fellowship in Amsterdam for international publishers. Um, so every year, a group of eight to 10 editors from international publishers is invited to visit Amsterdam and become more familiar with Dutch literature and the Dutch book trade. It's organized, among others, by the Dutch Foundation for Literature. There are many, many literary prizes in the Netherlands. Three of the most important ones are the Libres Literature Prize, which is modeled after the Man Booker Prize, CI Literature Prize, and the Golden Noose, which is the prize for the best crime novel. Moving on to the book buying and reading habits. Um, so in 2015, the Dutch bought 2.3 trade books per capita, compared to 2.2 in 2014. And the historic peak took place in 2008 with 3.1 books per capita. Um, and most Dutch read between one and five books per year. In July 2015, the market research showed that three out of 10 Dutch people read a book at least three times a week, and 12% read a book at least once a week. Older people generally are more passionate readers than younger people. Um, people over 65 spend on average an hour and 21 minutes per day reading, against 12 minutes only for 13 to 19 year olds. And compared to two years ago, the younger generation is reading considerably less. Basically everywhere else, um, reading a book has become less popular while other forms of entertainment and leisure have gained in popularity. As you can see in the top table, the Dutch spend 31 minutes a day reading books, newspapers, and print magazines, and 12 minutes a day uh, reading on digital media. They spend an average of one hour and six minutes per day on digital communication and 18 minutes a day on other internet-related activities. Then one in three Dutch people read eBooks more or less on a regular basis. As you can see in the bottom graph, the number of people reading digitally has been more or less stable since 2013, when the strong growth monitored in the preceding year and a half came to a halt. The reading habits of eBooks actually hardly happen at the expense of the print. Most digital read eBooks as an addition and continue to read print books. A small minority of 2% have fully switched to, to reading digitally, and 48% of Dutch only read printed books. Quick look at the libraries and their members. So the number of library members has shrunk considerably in, in recent decades. The absolute peak year was in 1994. A record number of Dutch owned the library card. Uh, 4.59 million people account accounting for 30% of the population. 20 years later, the membership had dropped to 3.78 million, which is 22% of the population. The decline is entirely due to the loss of adult members. And between 2000 and 2005, there was also a decrease in young members. But since then, there's been a revival, partly because libraries have been focusing more on children and teenagers. 7% of Dutch people regularly visit the library. The number of libraries has also decreased over the past few years. In 2015, there were 1,010 libraries in Holland. On the right shows that especially the number of physical copies of adult books borrowed is on the decline. Uh, whereas an adult library member borrowed an average of 37 books in 2000, this number is a mere 24 in 2014. Youth members are also borrowing less books over the year. Interesting development is the ebook lending. Uh, Dutch libraries started lending ebooks in early 2014, and 240,000 library members currently have a digital membership, which accounts for 6.3% of the total number of members. Last year, they borrowed over 1.6 million ebooks through the national ebook platform, and that almost doubled compared to the previous year. And the growth continued in the first quarter of 2016. Over 600,000 ebooks were borrowed, as twice as many compared to the same period a year earlier. Ebooks in total number of books borrowed is still modest, 2.2%. The ebook hasn't yet compensated the decline in the number of print books that are borrowed. Moving on to the Dutch trade publishing in numbers, so even though after many years the book market is seeing positive numbers again, the big publishers are looking now more than ever for the best-selling title. And also liter traditionally literary publishers are increasingly looking for more commercial titles. Um, in 2015, only 13.2% of all books published entered the top 100. And this number has been decreasing over the years. Fewer titles have more sales, and a growing number of titles that used to fall into the mid-list category get fewer sales. Actually, the mid-list as it used to exist is no longer present. And especially literary fiction in translation in a genre, is a genre that has suffered losses in sales. And for print books, nonfiction is the best-selling genre, 42.8%. Um, of the books sold in 2014 falls under this category. Um, the share of nonfiction has grown in recent years, and this happened especially at the expense of fiction. 
Novels, thrillers, and other narrative books account for 37.9% of sales, and children 15.8% of the market. Now, compared to 2013, all genres sold fewer books in 2014. Fiction suffered the most with 12.5% less books sold. And in 2015, the downward trend for fiction continues, while sales for nonfiction and children's books began to grow again. Now, in the digital sphere, um, it comes to no surprise, probably, as that fiction is by far the best-selling genre. Um, it covers 80% of all the e-books sold. Only 14% of e-books sold is a non-fiction book, and children's books only amount to 6% of e-books sold. Main market segments occur according to turnover. Um, the top left-hand pie chart so shows that for physical books, the most important turnover in 2015 can also be found in a non-fiction genre. This proportion increased compared to 2014, as well as the share for children's books. The share for fiction decreased slightly. In ebooks, fiction has been from the outset the best-selling genre, with 75% of the total turnover. Its share remained the same in, as in 2014, whereas the share for non-fiction and children's books fell slightly. In 2015, physical books had an average retail price of 15 euros, an increase of around 2 euros compared to 2010. Uh, ebooks cost on average 8 euros, whereas in 2010, their average price was over 11 euros. Now, the average print run in the Netherlands has decreased over the years. Best-selling titles of already established authors are, have a much higher average initial print run and give, I believe, an unrealistic picture. So not taking those bestsellers into account, um, the average print run of a new book is currently 1,648 copies for all genres combined, including poetry, for instance. Of course, the average print run varies always per genre. Uh, for commercial crime fiction, for instance, this can be between 3,000 and 8,000 copies. This decrease is not only the result of the crisis and decrease in sales, but also of the rise of print-on-demand solutions. It's cheaper for Dutch publishers to launch a reprint, thanks to, among others, the POD service provided by CB Logistics. I've noticed that sales are considered good when they go beyond around 8,000 copies, and the book is considered a bestseller when over 15,000 copies are sold. Of course, this also depends on the genre. In January 2005, the fixed book price was regulated by law. Publishers are obliged to maintain a fixed price for 12 months following the publication. Then they can decide to maintain the fixed price or not. The law applies to traditional bookstores and online retailers, with the exception of textbooks. Exemptions exist, for instance, for sales to individuals or public libraries. The price system is regularly questioned in parliamentary debates, and its renewal is not granted. Last year, it came under fire again, but it was decided to maintain the law until 2019. Books have a reduced bat rate of 6%, which includes physical audiobooks, but not ebooks nor downloadable audiobooks, which have the standard 21% bat rate. This, of course, means a huge difference for the retail price. The European Union has ruled that none of its members are allowed to impose a lower bat rate on ebooks, in spite of strong protests from around the continent. To the Dutch ebook market. Um, the rise of the ebook started in 2010. As you can see in the table, after an initial rapid growth, sales seem to be stabilize, stabilizing from um, 2013. In 2015, the market share for ebooks was still modest, with 3.7% of the total turnover. Now, in terms of sales, the numbers are modest as well. And 0.5 of the books sold was an ebook compared to 2.7 in 2012 and 1.5% in 2011. In the first quarter of this year, this year sales of e-book even declined, uh, covering a mere 5.9% of sales. And the borrowing of e-books through the library increased by 110% compared to the first quarter last year. Earlier, the average price of an e-book decreased over the past two years. Um, and it's currently about 54.6% of the average price of a physical book. Publishers have been working hard to digitize their titles, but they're still lagging behind. Nowadays, 41% of the new books that are published is also published as an e-book. According to CB Logistics, in the first quarter of this year, 92% of the titles from the bestseller 60 was also available in digital format. Now, more than 43,600 titles are currently available digitally, an increase of 3% compared to the first quarter of 2015.
climate change uh, to this, however, as the Netherlands is witnessing a new development in the digital reading world, the ebook subscription service. Um, this usually has a monthly fee of €9.99 Euros or about a bit less than $15 Canadian dollars. Dutch publishers have mixed feelings about these new services, though. Um, some are excited and open to discuss every new opportunity to reach readers, and others believe that the language charity is just too small for these services to have a healthy business model and predict they won't last long. Now, in Holland, ebook subscription services have until recently only been offered on a very small scale by, among others, Yindo, Bookmate, Bookmate and Blayo, owned by the bookstore chain Bruna. Now, they were joined this spring by Storytel, Mofibo, a very powerful and successful Scandinavian company, which recently bought uh, Norstedt, for instance, in Sweden. Uh, recently, Ball.com announced that they will introduce their own subscription service soon as well, together with the Canadian company Kobo. With the increasing number of market players emerging to recruit active readers, we might expect the ebook subscription model to quickly gain popularity. Uh, besides the usual tablets and smartphones, several e-reading devices are available on the Dutch market, um, including the Kobo Reader, which is the most popular device. And the most popular ebook for format in Holland is EPUB 2. And until, until 2013, the most used protection against piracy was Adobe DRM, but this has been largely replaced by digital water watermarking. Uh, like everywhere else, Dutch publishers are very concerned with illegal downloading practices. Holland has one of the highest levels of piracy in the world. A recent JFK study showed that on average in Holland, 9 out of 10 ebooks on an e-reader have not been paid for and therefore likely to have been downloaded illegally. I can say that the aforementioned streaming services for ebooks will help fight piracy because the subscriber can't forward the books that are, as they're always kept in a closed environment. The Brain Foundation is an important actor in the fight against piracy. This Dutch collective organization represents all actors in the entertainment industry in the fight against piracy and the preservation of intellectual property. Audiobook market. Um, now, sales of audiobooks make up of uh, one or two percent of the total Dutch book sales. Now, the Netherlands have been lagging uh, behind compared to Germany, Scandinavia, and of course the Anglo Saxon countries. There are a few initiatives to increase the popularity of the audiobook. Every year in May, the CPMB organizes the Week of the Audiobook, which also has an audio gift book. And the format has indeed seen a year. The book distributor Life Ahead reg registered an increase for the first quarter of this year in January and even more than 36% in March compared to last year's sales. Now, these numbers may look impressive, but even for a best-selling audiobook, we're still only talking about a few hundred copies. 2006, they have seen a pretty constant number of new audiobooks published every year, between 200 and 300. In April of this year, they had about 2,400 titles in their catalog. A downloadable audiobooks cost on average 15 euros or 22 Canadian dollars, and CDs cost about 20% more. Now, physical audiobooks are indeed still available, but an increasing number of people find their way to audiobook websites or by a streaming subscription um, who only provide downloadable audiobooks. Because indeed, the Dutch audiobook market is also seeing the arrival of streaming services, um, so it might increase the importance of this format. The largest service at the moment is, again, Story del Mofibo, uh, which started um, their services in March 2016. Now, Dutch publishers expect a few more actors to enter the audiobook streaming market this year. Several publishers are also active on the audiobook market. Some are imprints of trade publishers, as you can see on the slide, Zoom with the Basic Bay, Nova Zembla, Character. Cosé uh, has been publishing audiobooks for a while, and A.W. Bruna recently started uh, doing so as well. Now, other publishers only publish audiobooks. The best known is Rubenstein, uh, which launched in 1985. Now, moving on to the next topic, uh, market trends. What is read, what isn't? Now, as you can see in the illustration, thrillers and crime novels are by far the most popular book genres among the Dutch. One in seven book readers picks up a thriller or detective at least once a week. Literary fiction and informative nonfiction follow at some distance. More than one in 10 book readers read these genres on a weekly basis. This is followed by children's books, romance and regional novels, and comic books. Poetry bundles are the least popular, even though they are on the rise, as you can see. 
Um, the Netherlands hasn't escaped the global trend in adult coloring books. Ball.com saw their sales in this genre increase by 75% in the first half of 2015, compared to the same period the year before. Sales continue to go strong this year, even though the craze seems to have passed its climax now. And publishers also tend to produce their own coloring books rather than acquire from abroad. A look at a few bestseller lists. Um, the overall the top 10 of the overall best-selling titles of last year, all ages, categories, combined, print and e-books, um, is as follows. And you can see the, the covers on uh, the left side of the page. Joris Leijendijk, Dutch author of non-fiction, the title is Swimming with Sharks, sold almost 307,000 copies, and that's the number one best-selling title last year. Uh, the Girl on the Train, Paula Hawkins, sold 162,000 copies. Um, then uh, two Dutch titles, um Jara and Liva Mama, which uh, the first one sold 160,000 160, copies, and uh, Liva Mama sold between 125 and 150,000 copies. Now, numbers five to seven all sold between 100,000 and 120,000. Um, literary fiction from Dutch is on number five. Number six, Grey by E.L. James, which is published in Holland by Pometas. Um, and on number seven, The Girl in the Spider's Web by David Lagerkrant. Numbers eight to 10 all sold between 75 and 100,000 copies. Um, number eight is Ik Kom Terug, again, Dutch literary fiction. Um, and number nine, The Rosie Project. And number 10, Friday on My Mind by Nikki French. The publisher A.W. Bruna, including its imprint, has the most books in top 100. Um, followed closely by The Busy Bee and its imprint, and then Prometheus, who ranks third. And of the publishing groups, WPG scored best with 27 titles in the list. Now, the top 100 list contains a total number of 54 translations, again, all genres and ages combined, of which a stunning 45 are originally written in English. Other represented languages or language territories are the Nordic languages with five titles, and German, Spanish, Italian, and Japanese with one title each. As genres are concerned, 15 translated titles are fiction, excluding thriller and crime. Uh, but including all four titles by E.L. James. Um, 18 translated titles are thrillers and crime novels, seven are informative nonfiction, four are practical nonfiction, and 10 are children's titles. Now, if we look at the presence of translated titles in the best-selling top 100 of the previous years, we see that especially translated fiction has taken a blow in terms of sales, going from 22 titles in 2012 to 15 in 2015. Let me give you a few current bestseller lists per genre, uh, which I have reduced to the top five. I, I got a little bit carried away when I was preparing this webinar, so I'm not going to describe them all in detail, um, as I'm concerned with the length of this presentation. But you might want to take a look at the list later on, or perhaps you've already done so. Um, so this sheet, we can see the top five of all categories combined of, this, uh, of the last week of July and the top five of fiction, including crime and thrillers. The next sheet uh, shows the top five crime and thrillers and non-fiction, uh, non excluding food and drink, and then uh, the top five food and drink, and then the children's titles. Now, a quick conclusion from these top five uh, bestseller lists. For fiction, it includes about 50% books in translation, all translated from the English. Nonfiction, the top two, five bestseller lists include hardly any translations. Uh, children's lists uh, mostly consist book, of books in translation from the English. Now, of course, the top five isn't an ideal uh, source to draw conclusions from. If you want to take a look at any given moment at what is selling in the Netherlands, visit the bestseller60.nl, which is updated every Monday. And I've mentioned it in the um, further reading and resources at the end of the, um, of the PDF. So now let me give you an overview of the most recently published Canadian authors in Dutch, um, starting with authors writing in English. Their covers are displayed here. So New Amsterdam has published um, a few. Uh, first of all, Neil Smith's Boo and uh, Lawrence Hill's The Illegal. And then um, there's uh, published Jacqueline Park, The Legacy of Gracia de Rossi. Uh, Nijgen van Dittmar is the publisher of uh, Patrick de Witt. And this is their cover of Under Major Domo Minor. And they also published Anne-Marie McDonald's Adult Onset. Um, and Monto, uh, WPG Belgium, published Nick Pangley's uh, The Ayesha Writer Series, Volumes 1 and 2. The French Canadian authors published in Dutch. Again, um, New Amsterdam is uh, is here is present in the list. They published both Larry, Larry Tremblay's Laurent Jarret 
and uh, Nicola Dickner, Six Degrees of Liberté. Then Meridian uh, published last year, Justin Saucy's Il Pleuvait des Oiseaux, and uh, Cargo, Imprint of the Basic Bay, published Joanna Gruda's L'Enfant qui savait parler la langue des chiens. Um, now, other Canadian authors published in the Netherlands include Alice Munro and Carol Shields, which are both with the coast. Jan Martel, Michael Ondage, Margaret Atwood with Prometheus, and Gaetan Soucy with Querido. At um, some promotion of the Dutch literature abroad, Hermann Koch's The Dinner, uh, which is now translated in 33 languages, ranked the top 10 of the New York Times bestseller list for fiction for several weeks. Now, this has definitely opened the doors for other Dutch and Flemish authors. At the same time, Dutch publishers have become more serious about selling foreign rights in their titles in recent years. They invest in sample translation more, more often than before, and then not just 20 pages, but 50 to 100, and sometimes even more. Um, several North American and UK editors also told me that for their acquisitions, they increasingly turn to non-English language titles, such as Dutch, uh, because these still provide a chance to find a bestseller against an affordable advance. Now, only a few Dutch publishers actually have a full-time rights department or an agency that is part of their group to represent their rights. The majority of Dutch publishing houses selling foreign rights is done by the actual editors in charge of the Dutch titles. Agencies specialized in handling foreign rights and Dutch titles aren't really around. Dutch sub-agents sometimes take on foreign rights representation on a title to tape title basis, or they keep foreign rights of the few Dutch authors they represent when they close a deal to, um, with a domestic publisher. Now, as for Tusi's agency, we do sell world rights on behalf of a few Dutch publishers, including Mödenhof and the Coast, but we also sell rights from other languages. And it's very frustrating, uh, but we wouldn't be in business anymore had we focused on selling only Dutch titles. It's, it's um, very frustrating, again, but true. Um, so apart from the dinner, international successes have also been booked in recent years for Flemish author um, Lisa Spitt, whose lip literary debut, The Melting, Das Mach, was one of the hot titles at the 2015 Frankfurt Book Fair. It will be published in the UK by Picador. At the 2015 London Book Fair, I was fortunate enough to represent one of that fair's hot titles, uh, namely Hendrik Groen's attempts to make something of life with Mullenhof. It has now sold to 31 territories and just came out in the UK with Michael Joseph. Makers by Anna van der Kloft with uh, The Basic Bay recently entered the German Spiegel bestseller list and the German publisher Kippenheuer and Witch. And they will be published, uh, it will be published in the US by 37 Inc., imprint of Atria, as well as in China, Korea, and Australia. That have been translated from the Dutch, of part, of course, from uh, Anna Frank's diary, include Ida Simon's uh, A Foolish Virgin, recently rediscovered by Coste, which was originally published in 1959, and um, was recently published by, in the UK by Maclehose and translated in other 12 languages. And Jan Walker's, Walker's Turkish Delight, uh, which is published by Mullenhof in 1969, and a new English translation is coming out with Tin House this, later this year. Foundation for Literature, um, is very important uh, in the, for the promotion of Dutch literature. It's one of the five cultural foundations in Holland and receives a budget, which is about 14.5 million Canadian dollars, from the Ministry of Culture to spend on literary projects. Um, the foundation promotes Dutch language literature in the Netherlands and internationally. They give grants to Dutch authors and translators and are also one of the organizers of the Amsterdam Fellowship that I mentioned earlier. They're also closely linked together with their Flemish counterpart, the Flemish Literature Fund, to the organization of this year's Frankfurt Book Fair Focus. Now, a very useful initiative from the Dutch Foundation is their so-called 10 Books from Holland brochure. Um, they publish it twice a year around the Frankfurt and London Book Fairs, and it has a fiction and a non-fiction edition. Now, these brochures showcase the best contemporary fiction and nonfiction from the Netherlands for their audience of literary publishers. Now, when it comes to promoting Dutch literature at book fairs, several of them have invited the Netherlands as their guests of honor in recent years, uh, including Beijing, Buenos Aires, Bogota, and of course, the up fair together with Flanders. Now, it will be the first time since 1993 that this linguistic region will be in the spotlight in Frankfurt, and this time with the slogan, this is what we share. In view of the Frankfurt Book Fair, over 250 Dutch titles are published in German throughout 2016. The foundation has invited 71 Dutch authors to attend the fair, and several Dutch publishers have also decided on their own initiative to bring along some of their authors. For um, trade book publishing market, which is what I'm most familiar with, but let me also briefly mention a few Dutch publishers in the scientific and specialist information segment. Um, 
scientific publishers, I will just clear the real stringer RELX Group, which is formerly known as Reed Elsevier, and Amsterdam University Press. They publish too and are known throughout the entire world. They publish online documentation, physical and ebooks, and online and physical magazines. Its main customers are university libraries, and the majority of their publications are in English. 50% of Brill's revenue, for instance, comes from the US, 20% from the Netherlands, and 10% each from the UK, from Germany, and from Japan. Now, University Press also has a trade imprint that acquires rights, but its core activity remains scientific publishing. Specialist subjects, the copies are extremely expensive, 60, 70, sometimes over 100 euros, and will only sell in limited numbers each year. These publishers hardly have any books in stock. Everything goes via print on demand. Now, scientific and specialist information publishers don't often acquire foreign or translation rights, but when they do, they often translate from another language into English rather than Dutch. Um, our agency, for instance, recently sold English rights in a French title to Brill. Um, because they have offices and distribution partners around the world, they will want to acquire world English rights. Now, there is Pearson assessment and information that operates throughout the Benelux, which is Belgium, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. And they sometimes publish Dutch translations in among other the healthcare fields, but most of their Dutch publications seem to be from domestic authors. Language sublicenses. I'm not too familiar with, as in from English to English, and I haven't found much information about it when preparing this webinar. But I gather that for the same reasons, these publishers look for acquisitions of world English rights rather than being only able to sell an English language book to a limited territory. Let's look at um, how to sell to Dutch publishers. Um, first of all, I'll focus on selling translation rights both for French and English language books. So the market challenges, um, as has, it has become clear now that the market has shrank considerably in the recent years. Um, for several decades up to 2008, the Dutch economy was one of the strongest in the world and its publishing industry flourished in an exceptional way. Um, and when it came to acquiring rights, that pu Dutch publishers were very fast deciders and weren't, weren't afraid to spend fairly large sums of money. Um, that has obviously changed. Most Dutch publishing houses reduce the overall number of titles they publish, and they often don't recoup the money they spend up front for translation. So they have become increasingly selective, and many decrease the number of translated titles in favor of domestic titles. Um, it can be hard to, take, to keep track of all the changes that have taken place in the Dutch publishing scene in the past few years if you don't meet with the publishers regularly. It looks like things have settled down a bit now and no further major changes will take place, but of course you never know. It's a small market. Everyone knows each other and everyone talks to one another. Um, so the Dutch language market already on itself is relatively small. And on top of that, geographically speaking, the publishers are all very close. A few exceptions aside, everyone is based in Amsterdam. Um, and even within Amsterdam, one can distinguish a few publishing hubs. So um, this means that they see a lot of each other, know each other very well, talk to each other all the time. So there's a certain friendliness among them as competitors, and which can make it sometimes complicated when you have several offers on the table for the same title. Language submissions, um, timing is a very delicate factor. Uh, for Dutch publishers, the thirst of their readers for the presents a real competition. Um, so that's why timing is delicate. If you wait too long, you run the risk that Dutch publishers, even though they love the book, won't be able to publish it successfully because the UK or US edition will already be accessible to their readers. And what is more, journalists and book critics also have a tendency to want to read and discuss the English edition. So when the Dutch translation comes out, nothing happens anymore in the media. Now, at the same time, because of the small size of the market and the fact that Dutch publishers have become much more selective, they are also increasingly looking for a hook, a strong pitch, by any copies. So a lot of publishers won't consider a submission seriously unless it has already had a few big sales in other territories or film rights were sold. Um, so this can be confusing and, and con contradictory language submissions, um, even though a certain number of Dutch acquiring editors read French, they still often rely on reading reports, either in-house or from external readers. Submission a reading report unless there is a sample they read and that convinced them, or a book has a few nice sales and territories close to the Netherlands, and or has won literary prizes, and or has had amazing sales in its home country. Of course, such prizes and sales aren't a must, but they definitely help catch the publisher's attention. Um, but even when they commission a report and the report is positive, they hesitate longer now because they're more cautious than before. 
being able to read the book themselves has become a priority in the decision-making process. Now, let me look at the um, Dutch literary agencies and their roles. There's just a handful of literary agencies in Holland. Um, unlike Anglo-Saxon practices, uh, Dutch authors usually sign a contract directly with their publisher without the intervention of an agent. A few of the Dutch agencies do, however, represent authors as a primary agent. Still, well, their main role is that of a sub-agent. Besides the Dutch market, several agencies also sub-agents for the Scandinavian market. Um, agencies that work both as a sub-agent and a primary agent are Fabus and Bisseling and Marianne Schönbach. These two agencies represent the majority of English language publishers and agencies who use a sub-agent. Marianne Schönbach also represents several German publishers as well as a few French publishers on a title-to-title -title basis. Now, as for sub-agents only, um, there's the International Literature Bureau, Linda Cohn, Mo Literary Services, uh, Monique Osterhoff, two C's agency, of course. And then uh, there are also two agencies selling rights to the sub-agents to the Netherlands who aren't based there, nor do they have a specific link to the country. Uh, for English language titles, there's the Swedish Lennart Spain agency, and for French titles, the Parisian Wandel Cruz agency. When selling rights to the Netherlands via sub-agent or direct, for most English language rights sellers from North America and the UK, especially the big group and large agencies, sell their Dutch rights through a sub-agent. The choice is mostly related to time management as they simply don't have the time to take care of it themselves. Working with a sub-agent, of course, helps tackle the aforementioned challenges of selling rights in Holland. And knowing that a sub-agent stays on top of your submissions, follows the publication status and subsequent sales, among many other things, is reassuring. Um, some sub-agencies, however, have a large number of clients with many big authors, so it has happened in the past that rights sellers felt the need to change and go either direct or switch to a different sub-agent. Now, Dutch publishers don't really have a preference between working with sub-agents or directly with the publishers or agents. They are relatively easy to work with and all speak English, some of them also French. Most of them are very transparent and reactive. And they also actively seek to meet with the original right seller, even when the latter works with a sub-agent. So as a consequence, most of them have a direct relationship with the right sellers as well. So objectively speaking, if you have enough time and the willingness to follow the Dutch market closely, you actively pitch and follow up on submissions and, of course, very Dutch publishers on a regular basis so that they get get to know them and they get to know your taste, then I would say it is possible to sell to the Dutch market with, uh, without a sub-agent. Now, as for some advice, um, oh, sorry, I went too fast there. Advice uh, for successfully selling rights to Dutch uh, publishers. So it seems like a no-brainer, but it's essential knowing who to submit to and also make sure that they know you. As I mentioned earlier, it was tricky in the past few years um, to keep track of all the changes when news of of an imprint reached us about every week, but things seem to have settled down now. Of course, there can still be changes in personnel, and that's why it's important to keep meeting Dutch publishers regularly. Um, this will also allow them to establish a sense of what you're passionate about, what kind of books you love, and they will trust you and follow your opinion much more easily next time when you tell them to drop everything they're doing and read this specific manuscript right here, right now. Um, then communication is key, but not too often. Now, since they all speak English, go to book fairs, are relatively easy to work with, Dutch acquiring editors receive a lot of submissions. Now, unread emails pile up in their inboxes and editors might not react immediately to, to your submissions. An update from time to time is appreciated, but not too often. In order to fight clutter in their email inboxes, some acquiring editors have told me that instead of receiving, for instance, an update for every new rights sale, they much prefer receiving a personal check-in email a while after the initial submission with a summary of the right sales up until then together with a pitch and the manuscript even though you sent the pitch and the manuscript already so that they have everything in one single email. They might not even read general newsletters when they see it's not sent to them in person. Third um, advice is no the scouts and this also um, applies to French language. You should have a US and or UK scout and an increasing number number of publishers also have French scouts. On top of that, an increasing number of US and UK scouts now also look for non-English language titles, and they often have French readers. Scouts and update from time to time as well, and meeting them at fairs or at their offices will definitely make a difference. It has for me. English language submissions, as I said, but um, yeah, 
nowadays Dutch publishers might only start looking at a submission when something is happening elsewhere, they still want to receive English language submissions as early as possible because of the possible competition with the English language edition. Um, as for French language submissions, now, uh, some acquiring editors do read French. At New Amsterdam, Ambo Antos, Meulens Boekerij, De Geus, I can give you the full list if you want to. Um, but some don't, and don't have in-house readers either. And even though it's an investment, you're not, to sh not sure to recoup by an actual sale of translation rights, having an English sample will get things moving faster and can make a difference. And ideally, and depending on the length of the book, and it's at least 50 pages long. English language rights of a French Canadian book are sold um, to an English language Canadian publisher, for instance, and I believe this happens quite frequently. This will result, of course, in a complete English translation. So even though you'll have to wait a while and the book will have been out for a while, it is definitely worth starting a complete new round of submissions among Dutch publishers once this English translation is ready. Now, um, yeah, translation grants. The translation cards might be a deterrent or a reason not to translate a book, especially for fiction in translation, a genre that has suffered a lot in Holland. Um, that is why it's important to highlight in your pitch letter that acquiring addresses can obtain financial support. This can be a big help, especially for English language titles. Dutch publishers buy so many titles from the US and the UK for which no funding is available that they sometimes don't even realize they can apply for translation grants for English language Canadian titles. Now then, uh, collective promotion. I know this isn't part of the submission process, but rather the larger movement of promoting Canadian books. Um, but I think it would definitely be a great idea to take the brochure 10 books from Holland, from the Dutch Foundation for Literature, as an example, uh, to showcase a selection of key titles from Canada each year or each season. Uh, from my experience of selling Dutch titles abroad, I know that foreign publishers read the 10 books from Holland brochure with a, a lot of interest and has given me several leads, some of which have actually resulted in sales. Advice, just go there. Um, go to Amsterdam on one of your Frankfurt or London trips. That's what I always do. Amsterdam is get around in by taxi, public transport, or if the weather allows it, by bike. Um, from Frankfurt, there's a direct high-speed train connection to Amsterdam. And from London, you can either fly or take a high-speed train and change in Brussels. And, um, what are Dutch public? Now, of course, without wanting to generalize, the Dutch are very down-to-earth people. Anything that has any surreal, supernatural, or paranormal elements doesn't really sell, unless, of course, it's a movie tie-in or a specific genre title that specific genre publishers might be looking for. Um, then genre mixing, such as, for instance, a literary novel with surreal elements or a literary biography, doesn't sell well either. Historical novels have also not been doing very well, and besides literary fiction and translation, there has also been a drop in sales for thrillers and crime fiction recently. Uh, for children's titles, vampires, werewolves, etc., they don't sell anymore. Um, in general, especially for nonfiction titles, anything that is too local, too much tied to the area of the original publication is, of course, uh, difficult to sell. Now, what does sell? What are the Dutch publishers looking for? Now, of course, again, exceptions aside, and yes, it still happens that an editor falls in love with a totally out-of-the-box, unusual title, fortunately. Um, in the fiction genre, publishers are looking for just the quirky, humorous title. Not too quirky, um, but for instance, Graeme Simpson's The Rosie Project, or the Dutch book that I recently mentioned, uh, Attempts to Make Something of Life by Henrik Kuhn. Uh, then feel-good novels, women's fiction, uh, no chick lit though, um, such as Jojo Moyes, um, and then novels with a strong plot. Voice-driven novels are a very top sell. Um, then in the informative non-fiction genres, uh, um, like The Hidden Life of Trees by German author Peter Wohlleben. It's a huge success at the moment. Um, in general, the outdoors and the human body. Um, again, a German author, Julia Anders, uh, Gut, a book about the uh, intestines is also a big bestseller in Holland. Accessible spirituality and personal development titles, such as Marie Kondo, Brené Brown. And then practical nonfiction, besides the usual trend diet books, the no, no sugar, low carb, gluten free, etc., um, is back to basics. Uh, books on knitting, making your own jewelry, growing your own food, knowing what you eat, etc. And then for children, um, realistic titles, so titles that deal with problems and situations that children can actually encounter in their daily life. Um, uh, um, 
advances that paid by Dutch publishers have become smaller over the years. Um, they, can, they can currently be as low as 1,500 euros for a literary debut by an unknown author. Usually they range between 2,500 and 5,000 euros. Of course, there are exceptions. Again, everything depends on the type of book, whether the author is well known or not, whether he or she has previously been published in Holland or not, etc. So to offset these lower advances, Dutch publishers now often propose a bonus system. Uh, for example, an additional advance will be paid if X amount of copies are sold of the initial edition within its first year of publication. Um, of course, the situation is different with well-known authors and or buzz titles, and during auction and preempts, uh, when advances can become astronomical and can still sometimes reach six figures. Um, as for the royalty rates, so usually royalty rates of the initial print edition start at 7% of the retail price, less that sometimes at six, um, and the scale ends at nine or sometimes 10%, but hardly ever goes beyond. For the mid-price edition, they usually start at seven, some, six, sorry, uh, sometimes 7%, and don't often go beyond 9%. Now, royalties for the mass market edition tend to start at five or 6%. Usually, the escalate does not go beyond seven. In ebook rights, the standard 25% of net receipts, but now, oh, I've noticed that some publishers also accept an escalator starting at 25% and usually ending at 35%. Um, in recent years, an increasing number of Dutch publishers wants to include wording in their contracts to indicate that if, any, if at any certain moment in time, while the term of the contract is still valid, the printed edition sells less than a couple of hundred copies a year. So according to the terms of the contract, the book is officially considered out of print, um, but they can still keep the ebook and print on demand contract book only sells a few hundred copies a year, a new reprint is often very costly. Now that the distributor CB Logistics offers publishers affordable print-on-demand solutions, this is a logic, logic development of the market. Some right sellers accept this, some don't. It's part of the negotiation process, of course. Withholding taxes. Unlike most other countries, Holland does not impose withholding tax on royalties. And this makes selling rights to a Dutch publisher so much easier. Foreign rights holders don't even need to provide a certificate of tax residency. I'm sure you're all very happy to hear this. I am. Um, then the status of, of the translators. Uh, the translator is a very well-defined link in the publishing chain, and so much that Dutch language distinguishes between three types of literary translators. Um, those who trans translate literary fiction, um, those of, of tra who translate other books, genre fiction or children's books, and those who translate both. Now, Dutch translators who translate literary titles generally work on the terms of a model contract set out by the Society of Authors and the Literary Publishers Group, affording them recognition as authors. Until recently, this model contract did not apply to the translators of other books, who earn about 25% less per word. Uh, for these non-literary literary translators, publishers tend to dictate rather one-sided contracts, usually assigning copyright to themselves rather than to the translator. Now, last year, the Society of Authors adopted a set of general terms and conditions for this second group of translators. These terms and conditions are not binding on publishers, but it is hoped that they will prove the state of affairs for these translators. And this is a further step in the right direction in a country where the Dutch Foundation for Literature already awards translation grants to fund between 50 and 70 percent of translation costs for foreign publishers that publish Dutch literature in translation. And for classic titles, they cover even 100 percent of the translation costs. Now let's take a closer look at bringing English language exports, uh, English language books to the Netherlands. The possibility of exporting English titles to the Netherlands is definitely worth exploring. Um, it's a growing market with clearly visible and professional actors. Now, even though most English language books are imported from the UK, some also come from North America. English and North American publishers sometimes even bring ex early export editions to the competitive Dutch market. And believe it or not, sometimes the imported book is cheaper than its translated version. The lack of a fixed book price makes the English language book from the UK or North America an ideal candidate for three books for the price of two deals. And people in the book businesses are increasingly starting to realize this. Now, the options to export. Um, there's direct sales. Dutch bookstore, bookstores, both physical and online, are indeed closing an increasing number of deals directly with wholesalers and publishers in the UK and elsewhere also the possibility to partner with a Dutch importer. Remain for a language book importer in the Netherlands. There's CB Wholesaler, which is part of CB Logistics, which is the preferred supplier of online retailers Bruna.nl and ECI. There's Van Ditma, which is the exclusive supplier of English language titles to the ACO bookstores on railway stations and Amsterdam Airport. 
And then there are 62 Damrak books. Uh, they partnered recently with Ingram in the US and Gardner's books in the UK. So even though more foreign publishers and wholesalers are selling directly to bookstores, all Dutch importers of English language books have seen growth in their sales and turnover over the last few years. Now on to um, the last part of this webinar, a conclusion and um, just some thoughts on the future of Dutch publishing. Um, during this webinar, we've seen that uh, in 2015, the Dutch book industry finally saw positive numbers again for the first time in several years, even though the numbers are still modest and far from what they used to be. Now, after a few rocky years, the biggest changes in personnel, bankruptcies and mergers seem to be behind us. The e-book still represents and a relatively small market share, and the audiobook is even more of a niche market. However, new streaming services that are introduced this year might bring a change. They might also help address uh, e-book piracy, a big concern of Dutch publishers. Currently, the best-selling genre for print books, whereas for e-book fiction sells by far the best. Literary fiction and translation has suffered a lot during the crisis. And although online retailers are on the rise, the physical bookstore remains the favorite place of the Dutch to buy books for now. And sales of English language books are on the rise and provide opportunities to those who seek to develop this side of the business. Now, an outlook for uh, the next couple of years. So what are the challenges that face the Dutch book market uh, in the next five years or so? Uh, what follows our prediction-based experience as well on some feedback that I received from a few Dutch editors? Of course, please bear in mind that nobody knows for sure what will actually happen. Um, now, self-publishing. As I mentioned earlier, some successful traditionally um, published authors have decided to switch to self-publishing, and they've been quite successful at it, uh, backed by talented freelance editors, marketing, and salespeople. So uh, publishing houses tend to finance their complete publishing offer from the sales of their, their few best-selling authors. So in case more and more best-selling authors decide to leave their traditional publisher to self-publish, publishers will need to come up with a different business model to address this development. Um, they could decide to give their authors more attention and space and act more like an agent and or start offering separate services for self-published authors, such as editing, distribution and or marketing, which single publishers is already doing. Now, uh, even though the market has slimmed down both in terms of new books that are published with a slight decline since 2014 and the number of publishing houses, it is still generally felt that too many books are published on the Dutch market. Um, Chris Coy, for instance, of the Basic Bay says that in five years, and I quote, publishing houses will be a bit smaller still in terms of the number of books they publish as well as their staff. Uh, Bart Wissels of uh, Q Publishers confirms this, and he says, quote, I cannot predict anything, but unless everyone manages to reduce their costs a lot, which seems hardly possible anymore, one would say that some things will have to disappear. And again, he adds that this is what we've been thinking for many years. So in spite of everything, he does think that everyone will still be in business in five years, however contradictory that may sound. Now, the fixed book price, um, it will be up for discussion again in 2019, and there is no guarantee that the law will survive this time, especially since we don't know which government will be ruling then. Um, if the fixed book price will indeed be called off, this will obviously have a major impact on the Dutch book market. Innovation is needed, first on an individual level, as in sales, marketing, and promotion of books um, by the publishers. Um, the publishers need to increasingly reach the reader directly um, and improve marketing and promotion, which will become increasingly important to sell books. Even authors of a best-selling title no longer automatically sell many copies of their next book, and publishers almost need to start all over again to reach the readership. Good reviews have a decreasing impact on sales also needed on a collective level um, by means of reading promotion. Uh, the CPMB, the collective promotion for the Dutch book, um, rather than reaching out to the group of people who already read, which is becoming smaller, they will need to increase their efforts and organize specific campaigns to reach the growing group that does not read or, does, or no longer reads. That is where the possibility lies for growth in book sales. Publishers Association is trying to innovate. It launched a competition last year called Renew the Book. 
in which startups in the book industry from all over the world could participate. The winner was Bookerang, uh, which aims to improve book discovery by using content parameters to provide recommendations to readers and build reader profiles for retailers. The prize was awarded in December 2015. Nothing has been made concrete yet. I haven't heard much about it since. Um, so it remains to be seen whether companies such as Bookerang and in general this kind of initiatives from the Dutch Publishers Association will have a real impact on the Dutch book market. I found out that the second edition of Renew the Book will launch later this month, so obviously they do want to continue. Um, then um, an increase in online sales. Sales will increasingly take place on the internet with perhaps Amazon taking a more important market share. This will lead to a decrease in physical bookshops. Bart Vessels, again, of Q Publishing, uh, because of the internet, quote, customers expect a complete offer, not just a selection of books, unquote, which is what they find in physical bookstores. Now, I mentioned earlier that not many publishers are selling directly to the readers via their websites, and direct sales is a growing segment in all markets, and publishers will have to start tapping into that more in order to keep up with this development. I think that small independent publishing companies in the Netherlands have a strong future ahead of them. Uh, through their setup and shorter decision change, they're in a great position to quickly react to trends and changes in the industry and be innovative. It is easier for them to work closely with their authors and their readers. And it is this, it is this personal approach that the latter crave for in this ever-growing world of corporate mergers and, and buyouts. So with that, I've reached the end of my presentation. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and that you've learned many new things about the Dutch book market. Um, feel free to look at the resources and further reading suggestions um, at the end of this presentation.